Next is a guy that I think a lot of Raiders fans would be are going to be surprised when I remind them he's on the roster. It's Brandon Parker, the big offensive tackle, who, when healthy, plays extremely well. I mean, there's he does a lot well. I'm not saying he's perfect. I'm not saying he's Colton Miller. Mm -hmm. We're talking about role players, but he does play really well when he's healthy. Was non-existent last year, obviously injured. But this is a guy that's still there because they still think he could be a piece. And, and I think when a, a lot of people are really angry at the Raiders that they didn't do more with the offensive line. But I think they 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 knew, OK, we're going to go get some guys and we still have Brandon Parker coming back uh, again. Not a guy that because of injury that gets into a lot of conversation. But when he's healthy, he certainly performs at a good level. What, what are your thoughts on Brandon Parker? Well, it's kind of crazy when you think about it. He was a third-round pick. Now he's in his sixth year in the leagues. He's been around for a while. They've had him since 2018. Um, obviously, I don't. he's not a guy that you can really count on to be a starter or to play a big role because of that injury history and, and you know, some of the, the issues he's had. But, again, it's a depth piece. When you're looking at guys that are, have depth, to, when you're looking at guys for your roster depth, you're looking for guys, okay, do they have experience? Do they know the system? Can we count on them? Obviously, they feel like there's something there that they can count on or that there's something that they can tap into with him um, that hasn't been tapped into yet, that they're keeping him around. When you consider all of the injury issues that he's sort of had and all the other um, you know, problems, but they got him, but they still have him in the fold. Um, he started over 30 games for them, started 13 in 2021. So they still have, you know, believe that he could be a contributor. And I think that's why he, he's out there now, um, even though, you know, he missed all of last season. Interesting stuff there. Okay, I want to talk to you about a guy that he just makes plays. And, man, he makes some mistakes, too. But on a team that has very few playmakers, and that's why you saw them in this draft looking for playmakers in the defensive backfield, Amik Robertson, mm -hmm. this is a guy you just – you root for as a person. He's a great kid. Just – I wish you knew him, Matt. He's a great kid. But he does make some great plays, and then there are some times when you're like, what is he thinking that's why I have him at that role player status yet. If he could just get rid of some of those what is he thinking plays, I think he could move into a building block. But it's a Meek Roberts in the corner. Again, we this kind of talks about what we touched on with Brandon Face on is that they are looking to revamp that cornerback spot and just kind of see what comes out um, and you know how how it shakes out. They brought in three new guys. In free agency, they draft Ja'Cory and Bennett. Uh, Amik Robertson's still there. Nate Hobbs still there. So those are some guys that, that are, are battling for playing time. And I think it's kind of made the best men win uh, at those spots. So Amik Robertson has some experience, played over 30 games for the, the Raiders in the last three seasons, made seven starts last year. Like you said, there's the highs and then there's the lows. And I think that finding a, the right balance could be key for him but at the very least even if he's a backup having a backup that you know has played a lot of football for you um especially at a spot like corner is is a nice luxury to have you just hope that when he's out there he gives you more of the positives than the negatives